The Daily Stoic. 366 Meditations on Wisdom, Perseverance and the Art of Living, Ryan Holiday and Stephen Hanselman. Reader's Note I'm here to make a deal with you. We are going to listen and read every single meditation. On every day of the year, starting 1st January and ending on 31st December. Hope you enjoy the playlist. Introduction The private diaries of one of Rome's greatest emperors the personal letters of one of Rome's best playwrights and the wisest power brokers, the lectures of a former slave and exile, turned influential teacher, against all odds and the passing of some two millennia, this incredible document survive. What do they say? Could these ancient and obscure pages really contain anything relevant to modern life? The answer, it turns out, is yes. They contain some of the greatest wisdom in the history of the world. Together, these documents constitute the bedrock of what's known as Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that was once one of the most popular civic disciplines in the West, practiced by the rich and the impoverished, the powerful and the struggling alike, in the pursuit of the good life. But over the centuries, knowledge of this way of thinking, once essential to so many, slowly faded from them. Except to the most avid seekers of wisdom, Stoicism is either unknown or misunderstood. Indeed, it would be hard to find a word without a greater injustice at the hands of the English language than Stoic. To the average person, this vibrant, action-oriented, and paradigm-shifting way of living has become shorthand for emotionlessness. Given the fact that the mere mention of philosophy makes most nervous or bored, stoic philosophy on the surface sounds like the last thing anyone would want to learn about, let alone urgently need in the course of daily life. What sad fate for f a philosophy that even one of its occasional critics, Arthur Schopenhauer, would describe as the highest point to which man can attain by the mere use of his faculty of reason. Our goal with this book is to restore Stoicism to its rightful place as a tool in the pursuit of self-mastery, perseverance and wisdom, something one uses to live a great life, rather than some esoteric field of academic inquiry. Certainly, men of history's great minds not only understood Stoicism for what it truly is, they sought it out. George Washington, Walt Whitman, Frederick the Great, Elgin de la Croix, Adam Smith, Immanuel Kant, Thomas Jefferson, Matthew Arnold, Ambrose Bierce, Theodore Roosevelt, William Alexander Percy, Rudolf 
Waldo Emerson. Each read, studied, quoted, or admired the Stoics. The ancient Stoics themselves were no sluts. The names you encounter in this book, Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, Seneca, belonged to, respectively, a Roman emperor, a former slave who triumphed to become an influential lecturer and a friend of the emperor Hadrian, and the famous playwright and the political advisor. There were Stoics like Cato the Younger, who was an admired politician. Zeno was a prosperous merchant, as several Stoics were. Cleanthes was a former boxer and worked as a waiter, carried to put himself through school. Chrysippus, whose writings are now completely Completely lost, but tailed more than 700 books, trained as long distance runner. Posidonius served as an ambassador. Mujans Rufus was a teacher and many others. Today, especially since the recent publications of The Obstacle in the Way, Stoicism has found a new diverse audience, ranging from the coaching staffs of New England Patriots and Ciro Seahawks to rapper LL Cool J, broadcaster Michel Tafoya, as well as many professional athletes, CEOs, hedge fund managers, artists, executives, and public men and women. What have this great man and woman found within Stoicism that others missed? A great deal. While academics often see Stoicism as an antiquated methodology of minor interest, it has been the doers of the world who found that it provides much needed strength and stamina for their challenging lives. When journalist and civil war veteran Ambrose Bierce advised a young, a young writer that studying the Stoics would teach him how to be a worth guest at the table of the gods, or when the painter Eugene Delacroix, famous by his painting Liberty Leading People, called Stoicism his consoling religion, they were speaking from experience. So, was the brave abolitionist and colonel Thomas Wentworth Ringson, who led the first all-black regiment in U.S. Civil War and produced one of the more memorable translations of Epictetus, the Sufan planter and writer William Alexander Percy, who led the rescue efforts in the Great Flood of 1927, had a unique reference point when he said of Stoicism that when all is lost, it stands fast, as would the outer and angel investor Tim Ferriss when he referred to Stoicism as the ideal personal operating system. Other high-powered executives like, like he referred to Stoicism as the ideal personal operating system. Other high-powered executives like Jonathan Newhouse, CEO of Condé Nast International, have agreed. But it's for the field of battle that Stoicism seems to have been particularly well designed. In 1965, as Captain James Stockdale, future Medal of Honor recipient, parachuted from his shuttle plane 
over Vietnam, what would ultimately be a half decade of torture and imprisonment, whose name was on his lips, Epictetus, just as Frederick the Great reportedly rode into battle with the works of the Stoics in his saddlebags. So, so two did Marine and NATO command General James, Mad Dog Maris, who carried the meditations of Marcus Aurelius with him on deployments in the Persian Gulf, Afghanistan and Iraq. Again, these weren't professors, but practitioners, and as a practitional philosophy, they found Stoicism perfectly suited to their purposes. From Greece to home to today, Stoicism was a school of philosophy founded in Athens by Zeno of Syrian in the early 30th century BC. Its name is derived from the Greek stoa, meaning porch, because that's where Zeno first taught his students. The philosophy asserts that virtue, meaning cheerfully, the four cardinal virtues of self-control, courage, justice and wisdom, is happiness and it is our perceptions of things greater than the things themselves. What that causes most of our trouble. Stoicism teaches that we can't control and rely on anything outside what Epictetus called our reasoned choice, our ability to use our reason to choose how we can categorize and respond and reorient ourselves to external events. Early, Stoicism was much closer to a comprehensive philosophy like other ancient schools whose names might be vaguely familiar. Epicureanism, Cynicism, Platonism, Scepticism, proponents spoke of diverse topics, including physics, logic, cosmology, and many others. One of the analogies favored by the Stoics to describe their philosophy was that of a fertile field. Logic was the protective fence, physics was the field, and the crop all this produced was ethics, or how to live. As Stoicism, pro as Stoicism progressed, as Stoicism progressed, however, it focused primarily on two of these topics, logic and ethics, make its way from Greece to Rome. Stoicism became much more practical to fit the active, pragmatic leaves of the industrial Romans, as Marcus Aurelius would later observe. I was blessed when I set my heart on philosophy that I didn't fall into the shoppy's trap, nor remove myself to the waiter's desk, or chop logic, or busy myself with studying the heavens. Instead, he and Epictetus and Seneca focused on a series of questions focused on a series of questions not unlike the ones we continue to ask ourselves nowadays. What is the best way to live? What do I do about my anger? What are my obligations to my fellow human beings? I'm afraid to die. Why is that? How can I deal with the difficult situations I face? How should I handle the success or power I hold? These weren't, these weren't abstract questions. 
in their writings, often private letters or diaries, and in their lectures, the Stoics struggled to come up with real, actionable answers. They ultimately framed their work around a series of exercises in three critical disciplines. The discipline of perception, how we see and, and perceive the world around us. The discipline of action, the decisions and the actions we take. And to what end? The discipline of will, how we deal with the things we cannot change, attain clear and convincing judgment, and come to a true understanding of our place in the world. By controlling our perceptions, the Stoics tell us we can find mental clarity and direction in directing our actions properly and justly we will be effective in utilizing and aligning our will we will find the wisdom and perspective to deal with anything the road puts before us it was their belief that by strangling themselves and their fellow citizens in these disciplines, they could cultivate resilience, purpose, and even joy. Born in the tumultuous ancient world, Stoicism took in at the unpredictable nature of everyday life and offered a set of practical tools meant for daily use. Our modern world may seem radically different than the painted porch stoa poikli of the of the Antenian Agora and the Forum and Court of Rome. But the Stoics took a great pains to remind themselves see November tenth that they weren't facing things indifferent than their own forebears did, and the future wouldn't radically alter the nature and the end of human existence. One day is as all days, as the Stoics like it to say, and it's still true, which brings us to where we are right now. A philosophical book for the philosophical life. Some of us are stressed, others are overworked. Perhaps you are struggling with the new responsibilities of parenthood or the chaos of a new venture or are you already successful and grappling with the duties of power and influence? Resting with an addiction? Dappling love? Or moving from one flawed relationship to another? Are you approaching your golden years? Or enjoying the spoils of youth? Busy relationship? busy and active or bored out of your mind whatever are you going through there is wisdom from the stoics that can help in fact in many cases they have addressed it explicitly in terms that feel shockingly modern that's what we are going to focus on this book Drawing directly from the Stoic canon, we present a selection of original translations of the greatest passages from the three major figures of late Stoicism, Seneca, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius, along with a few assorted sayings from the Stoic 
predecessors Seno, Clanthus, Chrysippus, Mucinius, and Hecato. Accompanying each quotation is our attempt to tell a story. A story. Provide context, ask a question, prompt an exercise, or explain the perspective of Stoic who said it so that you may find deeper understanding of whatever answers you are seeking. The works of the Stoics have always been fresh and current, regardless of the historical ebb and the flow of their popularity. It was not our intention with this book to fix them or modernize them or freshen them up. There are many excellent translations out there. Instead, we sought to organize and present the vast collective wisdom of the Stoics into as digestible, accessible and current as form as possible. One can and should pick up the original works of the Stoics in whole form. See suggestions for further reading on the video's description. In the meantime, here for the busy and active listener, we have attempted to produce a daily devotional that is as functional and to the point as the philosophies behind it. And the stoic tradition, we have added material to provoke and facilitate the asking of big questions. Now we're gonna start with the first meditation. See the next video. Thanks!